Hi, my name is Brent Paschke. Today I'm going to be working with the Apogee Jam Plus and GarageBand. I'm going to show you some really cool things about how to deal with the latency in GarageBand using the Jam Plus and just kind of how to make a really cool little like Katy Perry style track. Today in particular, we're just using an iPad, just a basic iPad. You can use any kind of iOS device you want to use. So we'll start by opening GarageBand. Once we open GarageBand, we can hit the little plus button in the top right hand corner to open a new session. And we'll open a session using Drummer. We'll use an electronic drummer. It's going to open up with Leah. I'm going to actually switch this drummer to Magnus for this sound. I know I want the sound of this drummer Magnus. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the hi-hat and I'm looking for kind of a Katy Perry sound for today. So kind of a guitar driven Katy Perry type track. So I want kind of that standard four on the floor. EDM style beat and I'm going to pick a tempo so tempo wise I'm going to stick around like 125 BPM so I'll go over to the settings area and it looks like the tempo is in like 128 so we'll just stick with 128 for today so next I got to plug in my jam plus so I'll start by just taking my jam plus and plugging it into the lightning port of my iOS device and for today I'm gonna I'm not using headphones out I'm actually going to use my little black star amplifier which has this little eighth inch plug for an mp3 player or this kind of application so I'll just use that for my monitoring device and now when I press play on the drummer I should hear my sound cool so now that I got the drum track set up I'm gonna go ahead and add an amplifier to my track you can just hit the select instrument button over here and go ahead and hit amp and it'll pull up an app and now you'll notice that we got this turn on monitoring pop-up that happened here you can just go ahead and tap that we're gonna explain about this feature in a second. So with the amp set up, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my guitar to the Apogee Jam. I'll use this little volume knob here to kind of set the level of my guitar coming into the Jam Plus. I want to set the level so it's just before hitting the yellow light. So, so there we're getting a little bit of red and yellow coming in. So I'm going to just turn it down just a little bit and then I know I have a good level once it's set about right there. Kind of play a few chords really hard to set your level. So the jam is cool because it's got this little feature built into it for a straight clean sound into your amp and also kind of an overdrive sound. So to select between those two when you're on when you see the green lights you're, you know you're getting just what they call the pure digital signal coming into the to your iPad. And that's going to be just a straight, clean signal going into your iPad. If you press the button, you'll see that the lights turn red and you got a little bit more distortion. It's almost like somebody put an overdrive pedal on. So that's useful when you're kind of dialing up amps. If you want to, like, say, get that kind of feel where you have an overdrive before the amp, it's kind of built right into the Apogee Jam. And you can use a little overdrive on some of the clean sounds, too. But... Basically, for today, I'll probably be using most of the clean sound, so I'll go back here to the clean sound. So you guys remember when that monitoring, turn on monitoring button came on? That was because if you go over here into your input settings, you'll see that there's this little area where you can select monitor. What that's doing is it's letting you monitor what's going through the plugin on your screen right now. So right now, I'm hearing the amplifier, this little GarageBand Vox style amplifier on the screen. If I turn monitoring off at this point, you won't hear anything. So, I could turn monitoring off again, we won't hear anything, and then go to the blend button. Now this is one of my favorite features of the Jam Plus. The blend button enables a low latency featuring in the Jam Plus. And this is really cool. At this point, you see the amplifier on the stage. If we had monitoring set on, you would hear my amp, but we don't hear anything. But if I turn the blend button to, to the low latency mode, now you hear my guitar. The trade-off here is that you're not hearing any of the amp right now. But this is a great feature, and this is one of my favorite features of the Jam, because with a low latency mode, I can get really quick percussive parts to played without any latency. And latencies are really can, can be a real bummer sometimes, especially if you're playing some really 
really fast kind of percussive parts, you know? So a lot of times I will record with just the low latency button on, on the jam and then monitoring off. But when you're dialing in amp tones, you're gonna to wanna to obviously be off of the low latency mode because we're not hearing the amp at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn low latency off right now. And I'm gonna turn monitoring back on. So with low latency turned off and monitoring turned on in GarageBand, now you're hearing only the amp. Here we can choose to set any of the sounds we wanted in the amp. This is where we wanted to use just monitoring of the amp. Or if you're not really doing super percussive parts, a lot of times I'll just use this mode so I can hear if I'm wanting to hear my effects or some pedals I have on there or something that's the sound of the amp is driving the way I play the, the part. I might want to, if I'm doing something like that, I might just keep straight on monitoring. Another great feature though with the low latency mode is that if I want to use that sound and I want to still hear a bit more of my direct signal, I can just go back to the blend button, turn on the low latency mode. Now I'm hearing both the amp and the, and the direct input of my guitar. So I'm getting very, very, just no latency. Cool. So I'm not going to use tremolo on this get this sound. I'm going to pull these all down. I'm not going to use any reverb. Let's see. Turn off the blend button. So that's a cool sound. So next I'm going to just start for, with some different ideas. For this kind of sound I'm looking for, I'm going to use just a two note guitar part. It's going to be really simple. And what's really cool about this is if you haven't really played a lot of guitar, you're totally fine. You can, you can pick up and kind of grab something like this. So I already have a part written, so I'm gonna go ahead and press play and just jam along with this really quick to see how it feels. So cool, that sounds good. Go ahead and press the go to beginning button. I'll press record, it's gonna give me a four count and I'll just record that part down. So once it gets to the end, it's just gonna stop. I can press play and cool. So that's good for now. So once I have my first part, I'm gonna press the tracks view button, go back to the go back to tracks view. So for my next track, I'm gonna use the same app. So if I just tap this first track I did once, you'll see duplicate pop up. I can hit duplicate and boom, there I have another track. Now if I want to go back, I'm not going to adjust the tones or anything. I'm going to use the same tone and I'm going to just layer over top of that. So I already have a second part written where I'm just playing the, the third above the part that I just played. So once I press record, I'm going to get that four count and we'll be recording. So again, it stops at the end. I can press back. Cool, sounds pretty good so far. So cool, this kind of song, I like to do like double guitar parts with this. I'd like to keep that center, that first guitar I played up the center. And then I'd like to do two guitars. So that guitar I just recorded, I'm gonna pan that over to the left. So I'm gonna go back over to tracks view. And if I open up the settings button, here I get a bunch of bunch of things I can change, add EQ, reverb, or whatever. But I'm gonna turn this guitar that I just did, I'm gonna go ahead and pan that all the way to the left. I'm gonna tap the amplifier once, hit duplicate, get another track, this one here that I record in. I'm gonna go ahead and pan that over to the right. So I'll have two guitars going left and right, doing the same part. So the reason I'm panning the guitars left, right, is I just kind of want that larger, stereo field for the guitar. 
I kind of like that sound where I keep a root, the root note right up the center and then I'll put the third on the left and the right and hard pan them. So that's exactly what I did here with these two amps. With that set up, I'm gonna go ahead and press record. I'll get the four counts and I'm gonna double that last part I did. So cool, got it done. Let's see what it sounds like. Go back to tracks view. Go back to the beginning of the track and press play. Good, so I got a nice little foundation for a riff. Somebody could come in and put a melody over that. But I'm kind of hearing some chords at this point. So we got an eight bar section right now for this song. The cool thing about GarageBand on iOS is it works in sections. So GarageBand iOS always opens up with eight bar with an eight bar section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to the song sections button, tap that, and I'm gonna just go ahead and duplicate this section. Now you'll see an A and a B up in the ruler, which signifies that we have an A section that's eight bars and a B section that they, that's eight bars. And that's gonna work great for me because I want a 16 bar verse, but the second half of the verse, I wanna build it up just a little bit. So let's do some stuff to build it up here. I'm in the second eight bars of this verse one that I'm calling, and I wanna add some more energy. So first I'm gonna just add a hi-hat to, to the drummer. I'll just double tap drummer here. And all I need to do is press hi-hat, and just for this region then, for the second eight bars, I'm gonna have a hi-hat here. So you'll hear it just kind of build up a little bit with the hi-hat. So once that's done, go back to tracks view, and I'm gonna add a guitar, I'm gonna add a clean guitar, which is gonna be a little bit more rhythmic, and I'm gonna put some chords underneath this, this section that I have right here. Once again, I'm gonna go ahead and tap this guitar amp once. I'm gonna hit duplicate. And now I have, again, the same setting. This time, I'm gonna go into the amp settings this time. And this is gonna be a part that I feel is a little bit, I wanna make sure I'm just really getting rhythmically tight on this. So I'm gonna turn monitoring off on this. And now I just have, this is just my direct guitar signal. But it's nice, no latency. That's it, let's hear what that sounds like. So again, we just heard the input from the Jam Plus, but once we go back, GarageBand is gonna be playing it through the amp setting. If we go to song settings, we go to all sections, and we'll hear it loop around to the front. So now that we got the track finished, we got the drums doing a couple different parts. We got three guitars in there, a fourth guitar that comes in on the second part of the verse. Feel free to go ahead and like copy the guitars that I did, add some guitars, add a bass, add whatever you want, change the whole thing, remix it, have some fun with it. But if you want to too, just play exactly what I did to get some practice in. Start to try to use the different features of the Jam Plus with the low latency mode mixed in with the monitoring mode in GarageBand, you can start to get a really good feel of how to track some stuff that feels really comfortable for you.